CNBC 9 First News starts now. Good morning. We're tracking the air quality for you today. There's going to be several hours when it becomes unhealthy. I'll show you what hours those will be. The polls are now opening here in Kansas City, Missouri for this year's municipal elections. I'm Martin Augustine. We'll tell you what you need to bring and what to do if you don't. They have concerns about what's going on from the leadership of their organization, and they have a right to be a concern. A struggle over union dues is headed to the federal court this morning. We'll bring you up to speed on the case and what's being done here in the metro ahead of today's hearings. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us this Tuesday morning here on First News. I'm Donna Pittman. And I'm Jamie Weiss. And for Cody Holyoke, Katie Horner here for Dick Bender. And it's definitely going to be a hot day today. Yeah, whatever you did yesterday to stay cool and comfy in the middle of the afternoon. Today. Yeah, it'll work again today. There's a couple of things that will be different. Yesterday, we were mostly in the yellow sky cast. We spent two hours in the orange. Today, we may spend more than two hours in the orange, which means the air will become unhealthy for those who already have pre-existing lung conditions. Just limit your outdoor activities today if that's you. But everybody can help the environment by fueling your cars either very early in the morning or late at night when the sun angle is not as high. Same for mowing, for example. That chemical reaction when the sun is high is what creates that ground level ozone. Uh, we're looking at the temperature right now at 69 degrees in Lee Summit, 70 degrees in Leavenworth, 66 degrees currently up near St. Joseph. But in our forecast today, you can see between 1 and 5, that's when the air quality is expected to be uh, a little unhealthy for those again in that sensitive group category. Our highs will be similar to how they were yesterday, upper 80s and lower 90s. Right now, it is 66 in Odessa, 71 in Olathe, 67 in Liberty. It's actually a quite pleasant morning. The sky is clear. The visibility is fine. 90 in Warrensburg, though, this afternoon. 90 in KC and 89 degrees in Leavenworth. Jamie. Okay, appreciate the heads up. Thanks, Katie. We do have a traffic alert for drivers in the downtown loop. Do want to give you the heads up that we are starting to run into some issues because of an accident turned vehicle fire. We'll try to get our graphics pulled up for you, but you can see those fire trucks in the distance here. I-670 is shut down in both directions. This is our camera view from near I-35. Smoke no longer visible, so good news is the flames have been put out, but we are seeing some slowdowns in both directions. We'll continue to keep you posted on your morning drive all morning long. Let's turn now to your commitment. 2023 coverage this morning. Polls have just opened in Kansas. Look at that. Zero seconds. There you go. Kansas City, Missouri for the municipal general and special election. Big question on the ballot, the mayoral race. Now, there are also city council races in the May race for Kansas City Mayor. It's incumbent Mayor Quentin Lucas and longtime transportation activist, uh, former candidate for Mayor Clay Chastain. City council members Kevin McManus, Teresa Lohr, Catherine Shields, Lee Barnes, Dan Fowler, and Heather Hall are all term limited. So that means that when the new council is sworn in in August, at least half of the council will have new members. Now, before you do head out to vote today, you want to make sure that you have everything that you need. And KOBC 9's Martin. Augustine is live this morning with just some refreshers on what those are. Good morning, Martin. Yeah, good morning. Live here at the Penn Valley campus of Metropolitan Community College. Voters from six precincts will come to the education building here and cast their ballots today. But no matter where you're voting across Kansas City, Missouri, there is something that you need in order to cast your ballot, and that is photo identification. Mo Missouri state law says a non-expired driver's license, military ID, or passport will work, or another photo ID issued by the U.S. government or the state of Missouri. If you don't have any form of photo ID or you inadvertently left it at home, you may still cast what's called a provisional ballot. Now, that ballot will count if you go back home, return to the polling place later with an acceptable form of identification, or if the signature on that provisional ballot matches the one on file with your voter registration record, then your ballot will count. You should know that your local election authority, such as the Kansas City Election Board, will make the decision on whether the signatures are a sufficient match in order for the ballot to count. Now, as we said, the polls just opened up. will remain open until 7 o'clock this evening, and if you're in a situation where you get to your polling place late and there's still a lot of people waiting to cast your ballot, if you're in line at 7 o'clock, you'll still be allowed to vote. 
Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Thanks, Martin. And you can count on KBC 9 News for all of your election coverage. We'll have updates all day long today and when the polls close tonight at 7. We'll have those results on air and online, as well as in our later newscasts. You can find the details online at KMBC.com. It is 6.04 right now and more leaders this morning. Are, let's Okay, we're gonna have to go to here. Uh, more leaders this morning uh, are getting those letters that we've been talking about uh, in Kansas with the white powder inside, suspicious powder. Uh, this is happening now across the country. Yesterday, or last Friday, I should say, we told you that uh, Kansas GOP state lawmakers, the Kansas Attorney General, also the Speaker of the House in Kansas, got these letters that you're seeing here, uh, including the cryptic messages. The envelopes did contain some sort of white power as, as well white powder. KBI agents say that the powder tested negative for dangerous toxins. Now again we are continuing to watch this as we've learned this morning former President Trump and Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas as well as other high profile individuals have now received similar letters. The Secret Service is now involved in this investigation. Today a federal court hearing will happen for one of the most powerful unions and all of this comes as its members voted to remove the union president after he was accused of mishandling money. Let's go to KBC 9's Rob Hughes who's live in Kansas City, Kansas this morning with uh, what the issue is and what's going to go on today. Rob? Hey there, good morning to you, Donna. Well, the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers is going to be holding a rally here at the Robert J. Dole Federal Courthouse in Kansas City, Kansas, coming up at 7 a.m. Union members say that it's a peaceful rally to show solidarity with the International Council's decision to remove Newton B. Jones and to also reinforce that they do not recognize Jones as their union president. Jones is accused of mishandling nearly $170,000. He is fighting back, though, through a federal lawsuit. He is asking a judge for a temporary restraining order to keep him in office, saying that he did nothing wrong. A federal judge is going to hear a civil case here at the courthouse this morning at 10 a.m. to determine the next steps for the leadership of the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers. We're live in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm Rob Hughes, KNBC 9 News. Thanks, Rob. As of last night, over 160,000 residents in Tulsa, Oklahoma, are still without power after a storm hit the area Saturday night. And with the power still out in some areas, people living there are dealing with more than just the heat. Bea Porter is diabetic and has to take daily injections. Well, insulin has to be temperature controlled in the refrigerator. With these temperatures soaring, she now has to stay with a friend. So now that I don't have electricity, I have no way to cool my insulin. Um, luckily, I was able to get like a small lunchbox, but I can imagine other people who have medical conditions that require electricity. Tulsa is expected to see temperatures well into the 90s for the rest of this week. In central Kansas, state troopers are reminding drivers to watch for buckling highways. Just check out this photo from I-70 in Ellsworth County. This is just west of Salina. And as you take a look at this, the extreme heat is what caused that highway to crack. Part of eastbound 70 out there now closed for repairs. Troopers say this happens more in the summer, and they just want to remind drivers to take it slow and watch road crews. Watch for them as they make these repairs. Definitely something we want to pay very close attention to. Well, something else we want to pay maybe extra attention to. We always say this this time of year, but your neighbors who are elderly, mm -hmm. you know, you drive by the house, we're all busy going in and out of the garage, but you know, you don't know if they're inside in air conditioning or if they have proper fans and, and ventilation. So um, this time of year, something to really, really start is we're going yeah, to reach glad, 90. Yeah, 90 today, and it's the consecutive days that the heat starts to have that. So here we go. We're starting that weather pattern, and you were talking about buckling heat. Check out Texas today. San Antonio, 104. Dallas, 100. Several days in a row where they are in triple-digit heat. We'll hit 90 today in Kansas City. 90 again tomorrow. Mostly sunny and hot with poor air quality in the middle of the afternoon. Thursday, we get just a, a brief drop in the temperature, but otherwise it remains sunny and hot. Interestingly enough, over the weekend, it gets hot again, but there is a chance of rain, especially Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Let's check in now with Johnny Rowland, see how that accident's doing near Kansas City. Hi, Johnny. 
Yeah, we're uh, headed over to that accident. We have northbound I-35, southwest corner of the downtown loop near 670. Uh, apparently a lot of emergency equipment on the scene there. We'll be on top of that for you in a minute. Back to work for a lot of folks today who did not work yesterday due to the federal holiday. Very hazy this morning. We'll show you that a little bit later on. Right now, I-35 up past 75th Street heading for downtown. Looking good, and we'll be on top of that wreck for you here in just a few minutes. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. And just a reminder for North Kansas City drivers, there's going to be a partial closure of the intersection at 16th Avenue and Lynn Street this week. This is for pavement repairs. The work is expected to start tomorrow and last through Friday. This morning, owners of a gun store in Blue Springs are offering reward money for anyone that can help them track down a thief. This is what Blue Steel Guns and Ammo on Raytown Road looked like after that break-in. Someone robbed the store Sunday night and left behind this mess. They are asking anyone with information about what may have happened to call the store. Police in Kansas City, Missouri are still looking for a suspect in the fourth homicide case over the holiday weekend. Police responded to a shooting on Mersington Court yesterday afternoon. This was around 245. Officers found two men who'd been shot. Both were taken to a hospital. One died. Detectives are trying to figure out what led up to that shooting, but they say that right now they're seeing a common theme. So many times that um, it's a simple argument or disagreement that tends to lead to people solving those disagreements with, uh, with gunfire. If people settle disputes and arguments with words and further discussion as opposed to gunfire, we'd have a lot fewer homicides. Police need your help solving this case as well as other unsolved cases. If you know anything, get in touch with the folks at the Crime Stoppers Tips Hotline. Repairing the relationship between the U.S. and China, I'm Amy Liu in Washington with the progress made during high-level talks over the weekend and what's still left to do. He took the college basketball world by storm and now he's taking over Chipotle. Next on First News, how you can eat like an NBA prospect ahead of this year's NBA draft. Your station leading the way with first alert traffic, right now updates, and live looks from News Chopper 9, KMBC 9 News. It's 614 on your Tuesday morning. The sun is up and shining over the Country Club Plaza. Katie says it's been up for about 20 minutes now. This sunny and hot pattern will continue until the weekend as Katie shows you what time you may want to have indoor plans. Now we do need to get to New Shopper 9's Johnny Rollins. We're seeing quite the problem in the downtown loop, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jamie, I could barely hear you there. And we're trying to set up on this uh, accident that we have on I-35. Well, we said I-35 earlier. It's going to be on 670 into the southwest corner of the downtown loop. A lot of emergency equipment on the scene here. It looks like they are rerouting traffic around it. And bear with us as we're uh, just rolling up on this and trying to figure out what's going on. It does involve a cement truck, it looks like, and uh, other vehicles will have to kind of sort through there. But look at all the fire equipment down there. That could be a fuel spill situation, maybe a hazmat situation, but it does look like there's another another vehicle that is uh, involved. In oh, look at that. In fact, we've had a fire with this as well. So uh, always uh, scary to see that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll go ahead and pull back and uh, investigate a little bit further when we find out what's going on here but we can tell you that the west but correction eastbound 670 into the southwest corner of the loop is shut down right now rerouting traffic off of 672 southbound i-35 will work on alternate routes around that for you here in just a little bit johnny rollins news chopper 9 back to you in the studio and we will work to find out uh, how the people involved in that are doing hopefully uh, um Okay, all right. We continue to follow this breaking news out of France right now as investigators have raided the headquarters of the 2024 Olympics. Now, Paris is set to host next year. P police are looking for evidence right now of corruption uh, from what we're learning. We'll keep you updated as we do learn more about the search. The U.S. and China's relationship is on the mend after days of high-level talks between the Secretary of State and the Chinese president. And the summit was delayed over that uh, Chinese spy balloon. It puts the countries, two countries now, just past a low point. Amy Liu is in our Washington bureau. Amy, what does this mean for both countries? Well, the U.S. and China showed willingness to hold more talks, with one major communication goal still not done, direct military-to-military -military contact. Good afternoon. 
A handshake between top leaders, the U.S. and China taking the first step repairing a relationship on a downward spiral. A trip rescheduled by the infamous Chinese spy balloon. Secretary of State Antony Blinken sat down with Chinese President Xi Jinping. We had a robust conversation about regional and global challenges. That includes Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. The discussion touching on China's support for Russia and the war, threats over Taiwan and military intercepts near the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. It won't be long before somebody gets hurt. Uh, that's the that's the concern with these unsafe and unprofessional intercepts. Uh, they can lead to misunderstandings. They can lead to miscalculations. But with sanctions against China and American security still at risk, military to military contact is off the table, critical for both countries to avoid future conflict. It's in our mutual interest to do so. Um, we uh, did all of that on this trip, but progress is hard. The White House plans to continue talks with China when appropriate, likely in the form of a phone call between President Biden and President Xi. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu. Secretary Blinken's trip marks the highest level U.S. visit to China in five years. Yesterday was Juneteenth and folks gathered in Independence to celebrate at the Uptown Market. Many stopped to get one of these t-shirts. Uh, the shirts list the names of significant figures in the city of Independence's black history. One of those, James Bulger, uh, he was well known for his well-bred horses. And we got a chance to talk to his great-great-granddaughter on the importance of this holiday. I think it's very important, and especially our black youth. I've seen for everybody, though, really, that, that has knows anything about independence. They are not aware of this history and that there were so many famous people that made such inroads in the city of independence. And money from those t-shirt sales will go to the black student unions of the three high schools in Independence. Well, on the Kansas side, Johnson County held its second Juneteenth ceremony yesterday. This one it was at the Lenexa Civic Campus Commons. There were speakers, performers, art. Organizers say that they hope the celebration really brings an important part of our history to light. And through this celebration, it brings acknowledgement and commemoration and allows people to ask the questions like, what is going on? What is Juneteenth? How can we learn more? The county plans to make this a yearly tradition. Just a heads up, the holiday likely impacted your trash and recycling pickup. In Kansas City, Missouri, pickup is delayed by a day. And that's also going to be the case in Lenexa. Be sure to check with your local government just to see if you were impacted. The Lawrence, Kansas Police Department is getting recognition uh, given to only 10 other departments nationwide. How about that? I just received the 2023 Model Agency Award from the National Association of School Resource Officers. LKPD has a resource officer in every Lawrence public schools, middle and high schools. That's all to build positive relationships with the students and provide immediate law enforcement help if needed. Some big news coming out of the golf world. Kansas City native and golf legend Tom Watson has written an open letter to the PGA Tour demanding answers after the tour recently partnered with the Live Tour. He released the letter through Golf Digest. It was just two weeks ago that the PGA Tour announced an alliance with Live Tour. They are backed by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Watson questioned the secrecy behind the deal as well as the working with the country that has ties to the 9-11 attacks. Watson addressed his concerns, writing in part, quote, why was this deal done in such secrecy and why wasn't even one of the players who sits on the tour's policy board included? He then writes that his loyalty to his country and golf are equal, and he goes on to question the PGA's loyalty to the U.S. and 9-11 families. Okay. That's a heavy letter. Uh, 620 right now, and a Kansas native and former KU basketball player uh, will be waiting to hear his name called in the NBA draft later this week. Of course, we're talking about Grady Dick, and he's been cooking up something big ahead of the draft. The Grady Bowl is now a featured menu item at Chipotle. His go-to order is chicken, white rice, black beans, and several other toppings you see listed here on your screen. It's now available online and through the Chipotle app. The freshman standout is expected to be taken in the first round of the NBA draft. Uh, you can watch the NBA draft Thursday night at 7 o'clock right here on Channel 9. Then stay with us for KNBC 9 News at 10. That sounds delicious. I'm guessing that his metabolism <laughs> might be a little more ready for something like that than mine, but I'd give it a go. He didn't say if he got like the tortillas on the side or chips. Oh, you have to. Too. 
you have to have the chips on the side. That, that's just part of it, right? That you're just dipping into that good Chipotle bowl. We are looking at a mostly sunny sky right now as it comes up over the plaza. It is 70 degrees, southeast winds at eight miles an hour. Right now, our air quality in the city is yellow, which doesn't impact very many people. A few may have breathing concerns when it's in the yellow, but later today it moves into the orange and therefore those that are already uh, plagued with lung problems might find it difficult to breathe, especially if you're trying to do something strenuous outside. So take breaks from that if you can, if this is your category. Also, everybody can help by refueling your cars either very early in the morning or late at night when the sun angle is low. Also, that goes for mowing, for example, because it's that high sun's interaction with those vapors that is transformed into ground level ozone. So if you can do those things when the sun is low, that'll help decrease that emission. Here's our forecast. You can see between 1 and 5, that's when the air quality is most likely going to drop into that poor quality range. Winds today will be pretty much the same from the east at 10 miles an hour with a mostly sunny sky, just like it was yesterday. Our high will be 90 degrees. We hit 89 yesterday at KCI, so today a degree hotter than that. But yesterday, St. Joe, Olathe, Overland Park, all were in the low 90s. Today, Warrensburg will hit 90, Chillicothe 90, 92, again in St. Joseph today. Our forecast for the next nine days looks exactly the same. A couple of variations in the temperature, but mostly just hot and sunny through the rest of this work week. Let's talk about the weekend. There is a chance for rain. It looks like the best chance is going to be late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Temperatures will stay hot until Monday, and then they come back just a little bit before really surging by the middle of next week. We'll be right back. southwest corner of the downtown loop affecting a lot of traffic this morning. That is a cement truck involved with an SUV. We uh, uh, had a fire here as well. We don't know if that was immediately after the accident or uh, a part of it. And we still don't have any word on injuries here. You can see the ramp there above this in the southwest corner, 670 at about I-35 is definitely charred or there is um, some smoke damage maybe, but or it's a fire damage, but I don't think it's going to be anything on the line of what we saw at I-95, I believe, uh, in the northeast uh, part of the United States. You're going to see here 670 shut down both directions now. So uh, uh, eastbound 670 into the southwest corner being forced to southbound I-35, westbound 670 being forced to uh, northbound I-35 coming out of the uh, southwest corner there. Uh, no word on when they're planning on clearing it, but it's going to be a long time. So I think uh, to plan on an alternate route through here, it's going to be a good idea. And then add to all that uh, the ramp from Broadway to southbound I-35. We have a wreck here, too, as well. So, uh, yeah, not uh, the best place to be. Southwest corner of the loop right now is in bad shape. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. A mother is grieving after her son was hit and killed in a hit and run. She's hoping someone will come forward with information. Next on First News, hear the impact a 16-year-old Alexander Robinson had on so many people and how his memory will live on. Your station leading the way with Kansas City's only news helicopter, Johnny Rollins and News Chopper 9, KNBC 9 News. Thanks for being here. I'm Jamie Weiss and for Cody Holio. I'm Donna Pittman. Right now we do have breaking news that will likely impact your drive. Let's go to KNBC 9's Johnny Rollins in News Chopper 9. What more have you learned here, Johnny? Uh, in uh, particular, it's going to be the eastbound 670 run to downtown to the southwest corner of the loop being rerouted uh, to southbound I-35. We want to avoid that part of it altogether up to the Lewis and Clark Viaduct today uh, via I-70, I-70 into the northwest corner of the loop. We'll get you around this crash we have that involved a semi, uh, a correction, a cement truck and an SUV. Again, no word on injuries here, but heavy damage uh, to both vehicles. The fire did, apparently, that ensued afterwards or uh, during the crash, did get up to the ramp from southbound I-35. That will take you to 
eastbound 670 on the south side of the loop but they're still using that so there does not appear to be any damage okay so westbound uh, is shut down as well they're sending that to northbound i-35 but looks like reopening westbound 670 south side of the loop is imminent as they've just moved some of that uh, fire equipment out and it is going to be up here where they're rerouting 670 eastbound to southbound i-35 a lot of folks are exiting on 20th street so i-35 into the southwest corner of the loop not affected by this so if you're inbound from the southwest side no need to worry about that but if 670 is what you normally use into downtown eastbound from the south side uh, southwest corner of the loop then you're going to want to think about uh, that uh, i-70 lewis and clark alternative route Again, with this picture, of course, you can tell this isn't going to open up anytime soon. I don't think uh, certainly during the rush hour we're going to see it back open. So file all those alternate routes away, and hopefully uh, they'll work for you. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Goodness, I hope they got everybody out okay. We're looking at the air quality right now in Kansas City. Yellow is starting to show signs where the air quality is not as healthy as it is where it's in the green. Our sky is mostly clear. It's going to be like it was yesterday where it's sunny. Right now it's 70, but it'll get up to 80, to, excuse me, 90 degrees later today. And we will go from where we are now in this moderate air quality into the category that's considered orange or unhealthy for the sensitive groups that would be people who already have lung ailments like uh, lung cancer, you're recovering from COVID, asthma, emphysema, that population needs to try to avoid strenuous activities today. And the most likely time that the air quality is going to deteriorate is between one and five o'clock when the sun gets up high in the sky and the temperatures warm into the upper 80s and lower 90s. Winds today will be from the east at 10 miles an hour, Donna. Katie, thank you. Let's turn now to your commitment. 2023 coverage this morning. Polls are now open in Kansas City, Missouri for the municipal general and special election. The big question on the ballot, the mayoral race. There are also city council races. Now, when you head out today to vote, you want to make sure that you have everything you need. And going over that with us, KMBC 9's Martin Augustine with some reminders. Hi, Martin. Good morning, Donna. We're live here at the Penn Valley campus of Metropolitan Community College. Voters from six precincts will cast their ballots here at the Education Building. But wherever you are voting today across Kansas City, Missouri, Something you will need is photo identification. Missouri state law says a non-expired driver's license, military ID or passport will work, or another photo ID issued by the U.S. government or the state of Missouri. If you don't have a form of photo ID or you inadvertently left it at home when you went to vote, you may still cast what's called a provisional ballot. Now that ballot will count if you go back home and return later with an acceptable form of identification to show to poll workers, or if the signature on that provisional ballot matches the one on file with your voter registration record, then your ballot will count. It will be your local election authority here in Kansas City, Missouri, south of the river. That would be the Kansas City Election Board, which will have uh, the say on whether or not those signatures match well enough to count that ballot. Now, the polls are open, as you say, and they'll remain open until 7 o'clock tonight. If you're in line at 7 o'clock tonight and you still haven't cast your ballot yet, you will be allowed to vote. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. All right, thank you for laying that out for us, Martin. Thank you. Now, as voters go to head, uh, head out to cast their ballots on their minds, violent crime, it's a key concern. Right now, the KCPD has the fewest officers that it's had in 50 years, and that is why some voters that we talked to Monday say they believe part of the solution is having more officers out on the streets. Maybe a focus on the communities where crime is highest and... Um, addressing all the needs in those communities. Voters we talked to also say they'd like to see better streets, sidewalks, and other infrastructure improvements. You can always count on KMBC 9 for your election coverage today. We're going to have updates as those results come in after the polls close at 7. You can see our updates on air and online at KMBC.com. Today, a federal court hearing will take place for one of the most powerful unions. This comes after members voted to remove the president after he was accused of mishandling money. KMBC 9's Rob Hughes joins us live this morning. And Rob, what's the latest? Hey, good morning to you, Jamie. Well, the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers is holding a rally here at the Robert J. Dole Federal Courthouse in Kansas City, Kansas. Coming up 
at 7 a.m. Now, they tell us that it's a peaceful rally. It's designed to show solidarity with the International Council's decision to remove Newton B. Jones and to also reinforce that they do not recognize him as their union president. Jones is accused of mishandling nearly $170,000. He is fighting back through a federal lawsuit, asking a judge for a temporary restraining order to keep him in office and saying that he did nothing wrong. A federal judge is going to hear a civil case here at the courthouse this morning at 10 a.m. to determine the next steps for the leadership of the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers. We're live in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm Rob Hughes, KNBC 9 News. Thank you, Rob. Well, down in Texas, people in the city of Winona are without power this morning. It's been several days since storms knocked out power to the area. 600 people are without power. They're getting their donations from people and businesses to help those in need. This, is, um, this has hit us pretty hard for us to be such a small town. I mean, it's, it's made me cry quite a bit. The city isn't expected to have the lights, the AC back on again until the end of the week. Operation Barbecue Relief is going to be helping out down in Texas. The organizations deployed a team to Perryton, Texas. That was the area hit by storms last week. They'll be making meals and helping those devastated by the tornadoes that hit last Thursday, as well as helping those to clean up and restore life in the area. You can help Operation Barbecue Relief this morning by signing up to volunteer or donating online through the organization's website. I tweeted out a link earlier this morning. If you'd like more details, time now is 638. I think they do God's work. I mean, you yeah, know, these do. folks who've just had their worlds, their lives turned yes. upside down and to have not just that hot meal, you need food, but you know, you, you need just that support, that support. Right. Yeah, that right. just to sit down and know that somebody cares is yeah. so nice. And and Texas is dealing with another weather concern, triple digit heat for several days in a row. Today, Dallas expected to hit 100, San Antonio 104, and they're going to be watching the tropics. We do have a new tropical storm. We talked about this yesterday. This is tropical storm Brett. It now has 40 mile an hour winds, which makes it just barely a tropical storm. But watch the forecast as it continues moving towards us. It's expected to become a category one hurricane very early Thursday morning when the winds exceed 74 miles an hour. It will become a category one and then may weaken again. It's going to interact with some wind shear when it hits the lesser Antilles and then it will continue moving Moving most likely into the Gulf of Mexico, certainly the Caribbean and perhaps the Gulf of Mexico, which is why Texas will be watching that closely. Johnny. Perfect now, Westman. Hey, All right, thanks so much, Katie. As we take a look at the uh, I-70 inbound, this is going to be the Benton Curve. Take a look at uh, westbound I-70. This is what we were talking about as far as back and up outside the southwest corner of the downtown loop uh, along that south side of the uh, of the downtown area. That is where on the, in the southwest corner we have that cement truck SUV involved in an accident. It looks like uh, there was a fire afterwards. Uh, still eastbound is shut down, but we're thinking they're going to open up westbound, which is going to be huge because here's the backup on I-70. Looks like we have another accident on I-70. We see this all the time, an accident in the backup from the initial wreck. And then this also involves the Bruce Watkins Drive, uh, northbound 71 Highway coming into the southwest corner, southeast corner, I should say, of the downtown loop, pretty backed up through there. And then, of course, all the way across the south side of the loop and over to the accident location. Eastbound uh, 670 into downtown, I believe, is going to be shut down for the rest of the rush hour. So one more time, the best alternate route is continuing on I-70 up to the Lewis and Clark Viaduct, eastbound from there to the northwest corner of the loop, and that will put you around the uh, accident location with no slowdown at all. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. And we do have another traffic alert for drivers this morning. This is in Johnson County. Crews are going to be closing the right lane of northbound and southbound 69 Highway at 167th Street today. That'll be starting at 9 for core drilling work. It is set to reopen by 4 this afternoon. And this comes as crews have also closed the southbound off ramp at 151st Street for demolition work. We're taking a live look in the area right now. We've been seeing crews out there since early this morning. If all goes according to plan, the ramp will reopen a month from now on July 21st. This is part of KDOT's project to add toll lanes to 69 Highway. A family is calling for answers after their 16-year-old was hit and killed last week crossing the highway. The semi-truck driver did not stop. 16-year-old Alexander Robinson was hit on I-29 near Barry Wode and passed away days later. People have been reaching out to his mother to let her know that he won't be forgotten. 
I'm mad, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm hurt, I'm disappointed. And I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how to move forward each day. And right now the family, as they try to move forward, is asking anyone who may have seen something that night to come forward. They're hoping that will provide closure for their family. The Coast Guard is still searching for that missing Titanic tourist submersible. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how crews are searching for the missing vessel. As summer travel ramps up, so do troubles with travel this holiday weekend. Saw many flight delays and cancellations. Next on First News, the rights you may have as a passenger and what you need to know if you experience a cancellation or delay. Your station leading the way. Getting you answers on the stories that matter most to you and your family. KMBC 9 News. It is another day where the sun is up and it's going to make it hot. Uh, so that could, though, lead to poor air quality this afternoon. Katie's watching that. Also a timeline when she says you may need to spend, well, limit your time uh, outdoors and spend more time inside if you can. All right, let's go to New Shop and I's Johnny Rollins on that breaking news this morning. And Donna, yeah, we've been talking about this crash southwest corner at the downtown loop. This is a look at the southeast corner. I-70 from the upper right, uh, that westbound run not allowed to go to the south side of the loop. And a lot of those folks used to doing that. So we've been uh, talking about how it's affected traffic here in these westbound lanes on the south side of the loop. I think that's leftover traffic that was trapped uh, in those lanes of traffic when they shut down the interstate. And so uh, now it is a matter of whether or not they're gonna reopen that as the scene now has cleared, or I should say the fire equipment has cleared from those westbound lanes of 670, and it looks like they could reopen it unless there's some damage there, and it doesn't appear as though that is the case. We're still trying to check on that. Here's the accident. It is a cement truck, an SUV that's totally destroyed. Cab of the cement truck, too, both by fire. Uh, it looks like some fire reached the ramp from northbound, oh, I'll take that back, southbound I-35 to eastbound 670 on the south side of the loop. I know you're hearing a lot of east, north, southwest uh, as far as getting around this, but really the only impact that you have to worry about from the Kansas side is to go up to Lewis and Clark Viaduct to get into downtown this morning via I-70. And those of you coming in I-70 from the Missouri side, going to be forced up the east side of the loop and then uh, into downtown any way you can from there. So right now, kind of an ugly scene here and no word on injuries. We're still waiting to uh, see if everybody got out okay. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Yeah, okay, hopefully, hopefully they did. Johnny, thank you. Well, right now there is a frantic search on to find a missing submarine. Five people are on board. And experts are already fearing the worst. ABC's Ike Jachi has the latest from Washington. This morning, rescue crews from the Coast Guard are reaching a critical point in the search for a missing submersible carrying five people touring the wreckage of the Titanic. The Coast Guard tweeting out an update Monday night saying crews will be working throughout the evening by both ship and aircraft, scouring an area over 900 miles off the coast of Massachusetts with water as deep as 13,000 feet, making the search extremely difficult. We need to make sure that we're looking both on the surface uh, for uh, the vessel if it had uh, uh, surfaced uh, back uh, to uh, the water, um, but it somehow uh, lost uh, communications with the vessel, and that's what the aircraft and the surface search vessel is allowing us to do right now. The ship left Newfoundland, Canada on Friday, carrying a submersible operated by Ocean Gate Expeditions. That vessel started its voyage down to the Titanic on Sunday morning. Officials say the ship lost contact with the sub an hour and 45 minutes into the dive. Ocean Gate Expeditions says the submersible can hold five people, including the pilot, and has enough oxygen for 96 hours. The sub itself doesn't have a GPS, but is guided to the wreckage site by the ship above via text message. The round trip is at least eight hours long. The sub is supposed to rise to the surface if any problems occur. If they're not on the surface, it's a very hard problem because now they're two miles underwater. Even the rescue submarines that we made for our warfighting submarines aren't designed to go that deep. 
And now, ABC News is learning that among the missing passengers is British billionaire Amish Harding, his company confirming he was on board, posting on Facebook just hours before the dive. Since 2021, OceanGate Expeditions has offered tourists paying roughly $250,000 a chance to travel with scientists studying the doomed ocean liner two miles at the bottom of the ocean. Now, the vessel used is called the Titan, and it's the only one in the world able to carry five people to titanic depths. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Airlines are recovering this week after storms caused extensive delays and cancellations over the holiday weekend. And travel experts say more disruptions are likely as summer travel ramps up. When dealing with delays and cancellations, it's important to know your rights as a passenger. If your flight is canceled or delayed for a significant amount of time, you may be entitled to compensation. Be sure to check your airline's policies. Two, you can request a rebooking. And if your flight is canceled, some airlines may rebook your flight at no additional charge or give you a refund for the unused portion of your ticket. They would prefer you didn't take that refund. And so instead, what they typically are willing to do is to switch you to any other flight. And you also have the right to information. Airlines should give you timely updates and alternative options. Also consider requesting a reimbursement. If your flight is significantly affected, airlines can sometimes reimburse you for meals, transportation, and hotel accommodations. Well, this Pride Month, we are sharing the unique stories of folks in the LGBT community and our community. And for one Northland pair of siblings, theirs involves finding out just how similar they are. Always grew up a tomboy. Uh, played sports, never wore dresses. Leslie Hunter says she knew she was different than other girls. When she was a preteen, she had a crush on a basketball star, a female player. As a teenager, she told her parents she's a lesbian. It wasn't until a few years later she learned her baby brother was keeping something secret. I have an aunt that has a lot of, of gay friends in her life, and she tells a story all the time that she went to work one day and she said, listen, you know, my my nephew is gay. And they're like, oh, how old is he? Like, did he just come out? And she's like, no, he's three. Like, he, he just doesn't know yet. So <laughs> Tonight on KNBC 9 News at 6, how Logan and sister Leslie learned they'd both been hiding a big part of themselves and how their parents reacted when they stopped. A story of a sibling connection that may beat the odds. That's tonight at 6 o'clock. And at 6.51, we do want to check in with Katie Horner because it's already warm at 6.51 in the morning. <laughs> it was what, in the 70s? Kate? Yeah, yeah, we, we are. That's probably, you know, part of the issue when you don't really cool off at night and it gets so hot in the afternoon that consecutive days of heat like this starts to take a toll on the body. But we're, we're not under any heat advisory. It's just something that we monitor this time of year. 70 degrees right now. Our air quality is something that is going to become unhealthy later today. Right now, we're watching many areas that had been in the green this morning turn to yellow as the air quality starts to deteriorate. When it's in the yellow, that's expected to have some impact on a very few people. But when it moves into the orange category, then we are concerned about the unhealthy air on folks who already have lung problems. And if that's you, just avoid being outside in the heat of the day, doing strenuous activities if it's possible. Just kind of take it easy in the air conditioning, especially between one and five. That's when it's expected to move into that orange sky cast. East winds today, high near 90. That'll be a degree hotter than it was yesterday. Mostly sunny skies and that forecast days look just like that through Friday. There's a chance of rain though this upcoming weekend, most likely Saturday night ending early Sunday morning. We'll all be right back. Time right now is 6.55 now. We're checking back in on this accident. We had a cement truck collide with an SUV led to the shutdown of I-670 in both directions. Live photos now from News Chopper 9's Johnny Rollins. We're going to stay on top of this situation and keep you posted on the best routes to get around this coming up on KCWE with your first alert traffic. And in weather, we're going to have another hot sunny day today. And that continues really through Friday. We do have an orange sky cast for later today, meaning the air quality will become unhealthy. We have rain expected this weekend. I know the timing's not great, but we always appreciate the rain. And then look how hot it gets in the middle of next week. 95. That'll be the first time this year. Okay, so definitely uh, some pool weather in the future. <laughs> yes, snorkel weather. Oh stay gosh. under the water. There we go. Uh, thank you for spending your time with us. Again, we're going to continue to stay on top of that breaking news. Uh, Johnny is over with the cement truck and SUV 670 shutdown uh, over on KCWE.